Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling and really appreciate you guys checking the video out today. It's always uh, grateful to have you here watching. Today guys, we got a good one for you. We're gonna be talking about some of the myths, some of the misconceptions about using a chartreuse tail on soft plastics. Um, there's a lot of variables to this that I think a lot of people don't know as far as uh, things to consider as far as different types of chartreuse, different shades, how they apply on different types of soft plastics. It's a pretty complicated deal. I think a lot of people try to oversimplify it. So I think by the end of this video, it's gonna give you guys a good understanding on how you can really maximize the use of a chartreuse tail soft plastic. And so real quick guys, for, I just wanted to remind you, you may not have heard uh, since yesterday, we got our view product shopping tab finally up and running on the channel here. Um, YouTube made a bunch of changes in it. And now on the, on the view product shopping tab, when you click on my video at the bottom, you'll see a thing that's a box that says view products. I'll, I'll be putting a bunch of fishing products in there now. And if you click on those products and purchase one of those products off of that link, the channel gets credit for it, gets a small percentage. So that's a good way to help the channel if you are inclined to do so there. Okay guys, here's a prime example. These are just two Zoom finesse worms. This is a watermelon red green pumpkin here with it. And, um, uh, chartreuse tail, man. This is probably the most popular uh, modification to a soft plastic that people make using soft plastics. But what I want to get into today is I want to get specifically into shades and in relationship to the conditions they work in the best. Now, for example, and actually I, I don't have my uh, dies here. I got my, my boats in the shop right now. The motor, the trolling motor is getting worked on. So I'm going to talk about this instead of showing you exactly. But Here's an example of a bright chartreuse tail. This is actually stock like this from Zoom. This would be considered a super bright tail. Now, the thing about um, dye on soft plastics is the brightness of the tail or the brightness of the chartreuse um, changes a lot as far as what you want with different type of uh, scenarios. And most of the time those scenarios are in relationship to some type of a light intensity change or water clarity change as far as what you want with that. You don't all the time, you don't want some big bright chartreuse tail on there a lot of times. Sometimes you want a more faded chartreuse, a little bit lighter, uh, you know, less obtrusive, less visible thing based upon uh, several sets of conditions. And also another thing to consider when you're using chartreuse dye on soft plastics is every color of soft plastic will take dye different. And also different types of soft plastics will take dye different. For example, if you try to put a chartreuse tail on like a dark colored bait, like a black, black and blue or some type of dark one, it doesn't turn out there. It turns sort of like a baby poop green. It's not chartreuse. So you pretty much have to relegate in order to get the most out of a chartreuse tail to your green pumpkins and your watermelon shades, you know, some variation of that. <clears throat> some type of a, a translucent soft plastic is actually the best. Now, what you're looking for here is you're looking to create the shade of chartreuse tail and the amount of chartreuse based upon, again, those factors of water visibility and light intensity. So a lot of times this, let's just use this for an example. This would be like a very aggressive chartreuse tail. It's bright, there's quite a bit of it there. <clears throat> Some situations you don't want this. So say for example, this bait right here would work really pretty good in off colored water or low light conditions. I would consider this on one end of the spectrum as far as a chartreuse tail. So I would use something this bright on a dirtier water condition. Say the water visibility is you know, between eight inches and a foot and a half, something like that, or possibly a little bit cleaner if you have low light conditions. Let's say, for example, you have two to three foot water visibility and you've got a day that's windy and cloudy and maybe rainy. <clears throat> that's when the bright, that's when you want the bright there. That's on one end of the spectrum. Now, say, for example, you're fishing where it's bright out, sunny, not much wind, water clarities are, are sort of on the max end for uh, the chartreuse tail, which would be about two and a half feet. In a situation like that, I may just want like half of that amount on there. Instead of like dying like a full inch here, I'd just put a little puff on the end of it like that, um, dip it in there. Now, another thing about this is the type of application you have on your dies 
is going to change the color of it well, as well. Now, the, the most uh, profound or the most brightest colors you're gonna have from dye is by the dip and dye, where you just dip it in the bottle. I prefer two different things. I prefer the pens, the marking pens, or um, the spray dyes. Now, you can buy these uh, about any tackle store out there, and with the spray dye, it's sort of like just with a, a can of spray paint, you can hold the tail up, you know, like this, and you can just lightly go over it with the spray as light as you want to, and you can create just a very, very subtle chartreuse on there, just extremely subtle. And the same with the marking pen. You can take a like a chartreuse marking pen, and you can put just a tiny little bit of chartreuse right on the end of it or something like that. So the sprays and the marking pens will allow you to really um, fine tune and put a fine point on exactly the shade and how much of the dye that you want. Now, like I said, if you use the dip and dye, which most people do, which I don't recommend, it's gonna be bright. You're gonna have a bright color and it's also gonna be very uniform. If you dip this thing in a bottle of chartreuse dye, where you, when you take that dye out, you're gonna have a flat edge to the dye but if you spray it or if you paint it on with a pen, you can sort of create like a, uh, it's, it sort of blends in or fades out and blends in. So you can, again, you can really fine tune it a lot more with that. Now, another thing with this is, um, like I said, it's sometimes you have to reapply it throughout the course of the day. I mean, a lot of times you don't, you're, you don't keep a worm on that long, but sometimes if you're fishing something like a jig trailer and say you've got a, a green pumpkin or watermelon jig trailer and you got some chartreuse on it and the jig trailer is affixed you know by a keeper sometimes you got to reapply it during the course of the day but the main thing as far as what you're looking for is when you see your chartreuse tail in the water you want it to stand out a little bit but you don't want it to stand out too much you want to be able <clears throat> to look at it in the water and sort of like you can see the chartreuse a little bit, but at the same time, it's subtle a little bit because what happens is when those fish, when this bait is on the bottom and you're working your worm along the bottom, these fish will nose up on it and they will get literally like an inch away from that bait there and they will study it. And that's why it's really critical to have just the right uh, shade and amount of chartreuse to trigger that strike or sometimes it's gonna, you know, deter the fish from hitting. And most of the time, um, if you tend, most of the time it's gonna be a deterrent if you put too much chartreuse dye on there. It's just gonna make the bait not look quite so natural. So really try to get it uh, looking as natural as you possibly can with that. But anyway, guys, that's just a few, uh, you know, quick examples of chartreuse tail. I'll do a video later on. I'll, I'll have all my, my stuff in here to do the video right and show you, but I just wanted to run that by you, sort of get you, you guys can sort of get a visual on that in your mind a little bit. And um, something that's it's well worth, um, spending some time getting good at. Just get you a bottle of, you know, a bottle of dye, get you a spray dye and a marking pen, and just sort of use your own creativity with it. So, hope it helps. We'll see you guys.